Hi there and welcome to another tutorial for the Edexcel Core 3 Maths A Level Syllabus. In this video I'm going to show you how to differentiate the exponential function. Okay, um, to start with, take a look at the syllabus. What we've done in previous videos, we have differentiated using the product rule, the quotient rule and the chain rule and we have used the fact that dy by dx is the reciprocal of dx by dy. Now what we're going to do is work our way through uh, various functions that we need to be able to differentiate. And we're going to start with differentiating the exponential function. Okay, to start with the exponential function, I'm going to take you through uh, the graph of it and I want to show you something very special about the exponential function. I'm going to start by drawing two graphs that aren't exponential functions. I'm going to draw the graph y is equal to 2 to the power of x. Just take a second to think what uh, to think what that graph would look like, and let's plot it. Now you should know this from your previous knowledge, um, how a graph like this looks. But this is y equals two to the power of x. It crosses at x is 0, y is 1, because when you put x is 0, 2 to the power of 0 gives you 1. Anything to the power of 0, in fact, gives you 1. And it asymptotes off down here. As x gets to negative infinity, it asymptotes to the line y is 0. It never touches. It looks like it's touching. It never actually touches. OK, I'm going to draw another graph. Y is 3 to the x. Have a guess what you think that looks like. OK, here it goes. And I'm going to label that here. Now, y equals 3 to the x, it also cross at 0, 1, because 3 to the power of 0 is 1. Just notice it's hard to see here, but if we zoom in here, um, before, uh, for x is negative, actually 3 to the x is, has a smaller y value uh, than 2 to the x, but then after, Uh, but after, we, um, 3 to the x shoots off towards infinity much quicker. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something um, strange here. I'm going to draw the gradient function of this graph here. What's its gradient function look like? And I can ask the software to do that by pressing that button here. Just think to yourself, all the way along, if I drew a tangent to the curve, the curve will always uh, have a positive gradient. It will be interesting to see what it looks like. Let's take a look. Here the software draws tangents all the time to the curve and plots the x value versus that gradient. And the purple line there is the gradient function of y equals 2 to the x. Okay, now let's just highlight that if we can. That's there. Okay, this is uh, interesting. Now the gradient function of 2 to the x looks very, very much like the actual function 2 to the x. It's slightly lower in y values for x is positive. Let's do the same for 3 to the x. Just have a think if you can guess what it might look like. The software draws tangents for each x value to the curve and plots that x value versus the gradient of the tangent at that point. And there we have it. The gradient function is very, very similar to 3 to the x, apart from uh, the gradient function is slightly higher. So, we have an equation y is 2 to the x, and its gradient function is lower than it for positive x. We have y equals 3 to the x, and its gradient function is slightly higher than it for x is positive. So maybe there's some number between 2 and 3 where the two exactly match each other. The gradient function matches exactly 
the original function for some value of uh, our base between 2 and 3. So given that we think that might be true, I'm going to delete these and I'm going to draw the graph y is equal to a to the power of x. a is just some number and I'm going to start off by making a 2 because we've drawn the graph 2. So that is the graph y equals 2 to the x. I'm going to again draw its gradient function. Its gradient function is as follows. So there's the original function uh, here and there its gradient function. Now what I can do with this software is I can change the value of a. Okay, I can make a slightly bigger by 0 0.1. Let's see what happens. The gradient function and the original function get closer. Bigger still. 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. They're very close. 2.7. They are almost identical. Let's check if they're identical. Let's zoom in here. They're very close indeed. They are not quite identical yet. There's a difference. So let's um, change our steps to 0.01. Let's go up a bit. They're very close. Up a bit more. Too, slightly too big. Let's zoom in again. Okay, let's change the steps slightly. That's going away. I'm going down in thousands. That looks very close there. Let's take a look. Let's just increase... Uh, the, let's decrease by uh, 10,000. Let's try and get it closer. Oh, that's very close indeed. Let's zoom in a little bit more, see if we can get it even closer. We're very close indeed there. I'm even going to try and go a tiny bit further if we possibly can, if the software will let me. And that is a very, very, very good um, attempt at drawing this. What is this telling us? It's telling us that for the graph y is equal to a to the x, well, if we choose a to be this number 2.71828 going onwards, I'm sure we could make it more accurate, then the gradient function of the graph 2.71828 to the power of x is the same as the original function. Okay, so let's just confirm that that is true. Let's draw ourselves a, a new page here. If I draw the graph y is equal to 2.71828 to the power of x, and we ask the software to draw the gradient function of this, and it draws it, you can see that we are uh, creating ourselves the same line um, almost perfectly. Now, in um, maths, we have a name for this number, and we call it E. It's in fact an irrational number, and it goes on uh, forever. So actually, this number, 2.718, etc., is E to the X. So if we drew the graph Y is E to the power of X, this really is the graph 2.7182, uh, etc., going onwards to the power of x. If we drew that graph and then we asked the autograph to draw its gradient function, um, the two would be identical to each other. Okay, so moving back over here to the exponential function. The exponential function is a very important function. If y is equal to e to the x, then dy by dx, its gradient function, is also equal to e to the x. And one thing to say about e, e is this irrational number, e is 2.718 going on, it is irrational, it goes on forever. And it's such an important number, um, when you take the derivative of, of that number to the power of x, it gives you the same function back. Okay, um, I want to do an extension of that rule. There's a rule. So the gradient function of, of the exponential is the same thing. I want to find a rule. What if I had a function y is equal to e 
to the f of x some function, for example, uh, y is equal to e to the x squared. How would I differentiate that? Well, we could use the chain rule, okay? We could use the chain rule. I remember the chain rule, uh, we could say something like, uh, let u equals f of x, so that y is equal to e to the u, then the differential of du by dx would be f dash x, dy by du would be e to the u using this rule above, and the chain rule said that dy by dx was equal to dy by du times du by dx, and so we would get ourselves f dash x e to the u, but u was f of x, so it would be f dash x e to the f of x. And so writing this out as a formal rule, if you have a function that is of the form e to the f of x, f of x some function of x, then dy by dx, you differentiate the exponent f dash x and you multiply it by e to the f of x back. Okay, time to do some questions using this new rule. Remember the exponential function e to the x differentiates to itself, e to the f of x differentiates to f dash x e to the f of x back. Right, let's do some examples. I encourage you to probably pause the video and try each one because they're very simple and, and it's the easiest way to do it. Okay, differentiate with respect to x, y is equal to 5 e to the x. Well, this is simple. dy by dx is therefore equal to the differential of this. Well, e to the x differentiates to e to the x and 5 is just a number in front of it, it doesn't affect it. So dy by dx must be 5 e to the x. Very simple. Next one, pause, have a go. Differentiate with respect to x, y is equal to e to the uh, 2x plus 3. This is of this form up here, uh, where you've got your f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 it's e to the f of x. So dy by dx, well it's the differential of the exponent, if you differentiate 2x plus 3 you get 2, multiplied by e to uh, the exponent that was before, e to the f of x, so e to the 2x plus 3. And I'd probably just write that without brackets, 2e to the 2x plus 3, simple. Next one, pause the video, have a go. Okay, how on earth would I do this one? This isn't in one of my rules. Well, it kind of is because you can differentiate e to the x squared, okay, um, using um, this rule up here. And otherwise, you've got a product. You've got one function of x times another function of x. So really, what you've got, this is like your u, and this is like your v, and what you're actually doing is the product rule. You remember the product rule? It said that if y is equal to uv, u times v, tidy that up, if y is equal to uv, u times v, where u and v are two functions of x, then dy by dx is equal to uv dash plus vu dash. Okay, so therefore state your u and your v, u is equal to x, that would make u dash the differential one, v is equal to e to the x squared, and v dashed, using this rule up here, would be the differential of the exponent, which is 2x, e to the f of x, e to the x squared. So now you could say what dy by dx was. Well, dy by dx is therefore uv dashed, which is x, 2x, e to the x squared, plus vu dashed, so plus e to the x squared, multiplied by 1. I'd probably tidy it up myself and factorise out uh, a common factor. Well, there's e to the x here, e to the x squared here, and e to the x squared here. So I'd be tempted to just tidy it up and factorise that out. e to the x squared, what would be left here? 2x squared, what would be left here? Uh, plus a 1. And you have found yourself your dy by dx, and you're done. Okay, last example, have a go at this yourself, think what rule you might use, I'll go through in a few seconds.
Okay, hopefully with a bit of luck, um, you realise that this was a quotient. This was y is equal to u over v with two functions of x. And you hopefully remember the quotient rule. In this case, the answer was v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. So let's write our u, our v, our u dash, our v dash. u is equal to e to the 2x plus 3. And the differential of this is clearly, we've done it in the previous part, but it's 2e to the 2x plus 3. Our v on the bottom was equal to x. And so our v dash is equal to 1. Now it's just a case of substitution. v u dash, so that would be x multiplied by 2e to the 2x plus 3. Minus u v dash, so it would be e to the 2x plus 3 multiplied by 1, all over v squared, all divided by v squared, and v is x, so all divided by x squared. I'd be tempted to just tidy up the numerator. What factor is in both the items of the numerator? Well, an e to the 2x, is, the 2x plus 3 is here, an e to the 2x plus 3 is here. I'd factorise that out, and I would write that as e to the 2x plus 3, What's left over? where well, you would have a 2x, subtract 1, and all of that is divided by x squared. That's all we're going to do. That They are the examples of differentiating uh, the exponential function. Just to finish with, I suggest that you um, read chapter 8, page 138 and 139, look at the examples, and then do all of exercise 8D. Thank you very much for watching.